Here's a good set of the first 10 Linux commands to learn. Chapters are marked. Go. For this video, we are using an Ubuntu system. There are several desktop managers available. We'll go over how to open up a terminal in three of them. There are a wide variety of terminal programs available. Once you become comfortable with the default one, you may want to explore alternatives. In this video, we will be using the born again shell, nicknamed Bash. Let's start with Unity. You can see that there are visible shortcuts on the desktop and in the launcher bar. You can double click the icon to open the terminal. If it's in the launcher, you can single click it. You can also open up the dash and look for it. Click the icon when you find it. The terminal is also available on the right click context menu. You can open a terminal from the right click menu in the file browser. This will open a terminal with the working directory pointing to that folder. GNOME is similar. You may have a desktop shortcut. You can use the show applications button and then search for terminal. Double click that puppy and a terminal will open. And finally, we have the right click option to bring up a menu, open in terminal. You can do that from a file browser or the desktop. On LXDE, you may find a terminal on the desktop. This is a different terminal than the one that we looked at previously. You can also use the application menu down here. Notice that in the desktop context menu, there's no entry for launching a terminal. Or in the file manager either for that matter. However, there is a terminal entry in the tools menu of the file manager window. This launches the GNOME terminal. When you open the terminal window, a shell prompt greets you. Here we are using the born again shell known as Bash. The shell is an efficient textual interface to your computer. The shell allows you to run programs and commands. You can invoke any program on your computer. There are lots of command line tools, like a lot, pretty much for anything you want to do. The shell provides an interactive programming language, which allows for scripting. Let's enter our command. We will ask for the date. Hmm, it's November 15th. We can pass arguments to our commands. Echo displays a line of text. Arguments are separated by white space, such as spaces. If we want to print a string that has a space in it, we need to surround it in quotes. Double quotes allow for string substitution. For example, I can call the date program. I can use the up arrow on the keyboard to bring up previous commands. I hit the up arrow key. If I change the double quotes to single quotes, Echo will interpret the argument as a literal string. Just the string contents, no substitution. Let's take a look at the prompt. The first entry is the username, in this case, Jetson Hacks. The at sign acts as a separator. It is followed by the machine name, in this case, Jetson Demo. The colon following acts as another separator. Then we have the present working directory. Tilde is an abbreviation for the user's home directory. The dollar sign represents the command prompt. I'll bring up a file browser to better help us visualize what's going on. The tilde represents our home directory. We can print out the fully qualified path name using pwd. Present working directory. The first forward slash indicates the root directory. Home is a directory in the root directory. Our username, Jetson Hacks, is a directory in the home directory. In the graphical file browser, a directory is called a folder. This corresponds to what we see in the properties for this folder in the file browser. To list the directory contents, we use ls. In a major surprise, the listing matches what's in the file browser. Files and directories are color coded. We can use the file command to determine the file type. This is a text file. This is a shell script. That's why it's green in the directory list. Directories will identify as directories, of course. 
The cat command concatenates files and prints them out to the standard output. Standard output defaults to the terminal. If only one file is given, then it prints out that file. We see test.sh is a shell file. Let's run it and see what happens. Why? It says hello. We can also run it directly. The period, which we usually call dot, represents the current directory. Here, we are describing the relative path of the script file. We can also pass flags to commands. For example, ls minus l prints a long listing. From here, we see that test.sh has the execute bits set. That means that we can execute the script as a program. We can use the clear command to clear the terminal. Let's take a look to see what's inside our text file. You should also be aware that there is autocomplete available. Hitting the tab key will complete a partial entry. We can see that cat combined the two files. Most commands have some form of help available. It's usually dash dash help. If you have the program man installed on your system, there are usually man pages available for your commands. In the file browser, let's display our folder as a list. This will match a long directory listing format. Notice that we combine flags together. Here we ask for a long list in human readable sizes with dash LH. In any given folder, there may be hidden files. Hidden files have a name that start with a dot. These are referred to as dot files. We use the A flag to make them reveal themselves. They are very shadowy. Typically, dot files are simply configuration files where software programs store their configuration settings in plain text-based files or directories. There are two special cases here. The first is a single dot, which represents the present working directory. The second is two dots together. This represents the parent directory. In other words, it's a shortcut to the directory which contains the directory. Neither of these show up in the file browser. LS dot gives us the current directory. That's the default with no argument. Let's change the file browser. We'll turn off the hidden files. LS dot dot gives us the parent directory. This is the home directory, which contains the directory jets and hacks. Let's take a look in the file browser. If we go up another level, we are at the root directory. Now our present working directory is still our home directory. We can change our working directory using the cd command. We can give it a relative path like this, where we go back to the root directory. We can give it an absolute path. Let's go back to the home directory. We use tab for autocomplete. You can see that the working directory in the prompt changes. It knows where the home directory is and substitutes tilde there. I can go straight to the root. When you are a regular user, there's not much to see here. And if we pass a dash, we go back to the previous location. In this case, it's the home directory. Let's switch back to the root for a second. We can also use the tilde sign to go back to our home directory. We'll use the make directory command. Let's call our new directory demo. You can see that it shows up in the file browser. We switch over to the demo directory. Let's make some more directories. We'll call them durs. We can add folders within folders. The minus p flag means to make the parent directories as needed. We can see that it was created over here. Go back to the demo folder. Let's hop back up into our home directory. And now into the pictures directory. Taking a look around, there's some JPEGs here. These are a type of image file. Now we use the cp command to copy one of these files. Let's copy it into dir1 in the demo directory. Remember the tilde represents our home directory. Let's take a look in the file browser. There it is. Let's take a look at all the JPEG files in the pictures directory. The asterisk, which we call a star, represents a wildcard character. Wildcards are mainly used to increase the efficiency and flexibility of searches in Linux. There are three main wildcards that the shell uses. A star, which matches one or more occurrences of any character, including no character. 
The question mark represents or matches a single occurrence of a character. Bracketed characters matches any occurrence of a character enclosed in the square brackets. And here's a major takeaway. The shell is an interactive programming language working at a low level in the system, which means that you can break things. Break them so hard they'd be broken forever. There's no safety net. Commands execute immediately. There's no trash can to save your deleted files. they be gone forever. Wild cards are a multiplier. They can multiply mistakes. The shell is powerful. You must treat it with respect. Make sure you practice, especially before deleting groups of files. Let's copy our JPEG files over into dir1. Dir is funny. Let's go over to the demo directory. We use the R flag to recursively copy the contents of the entire directory dir1 to dir2. We can see everything got copied over here. Let's switch over to dir2 slash dir1. We can see all the photos. Let's copy everything in this folder to the parent directory. That should be in dir2. Let's look in the file browser here. Everything's there. We'll go back to dir1. If we want to delete a file, we use rm. Type in the file name or the absolute path or the relative path. It is removed from the file system immediately. There is no going back. We can use wildcards here. This deletes all of the files in the directory because you can lose data here. Use this version of the command carefully. Go back up into dir2. We can use the mv command to move files. Let's move these JPEG files into dir1. Let's take a look in the file browser. You can also use the mv command to rename files and directories. Throws you off a little when you see it the first time. Let's go back up into the demo directory. We can move a directory into another directory. Let's go into the dir5 directory. And we will move the contents of the photos directory into dir5. Now we move the photos directory that's in dir2. We'll put that also into dir5. Remember, we're just playing here, trying to get a feel for what it's like to move files around. Let's go back to the demo folder in the file browser. We can remove an empty directory using the rmdir command. We didn't put anything in dir3. It barks at us if the directory is not empty. Remember that dir4 has dir5 in it and our photos. We could go into the directories and delete files until they are empty. We could also use wildcards. The photos directory is empty, so we can remove that. But when we come up a couple of levels again, we try to get rid of dir4. It's still not empty. It has dir5 in it. Here's a little cheat. We use the remove command with the minus R flag. This deletes not only the directory, but also its contents. Notice that we remove the safety built into the remove directory command. That's a quick overview of how to use the command line. Here's the thing. You won't learn this by just watching YouTube videos. You need to sit down at the computer and start playing. Navigate the file system, list directory contents, create directories, move files, and so on. This is a very efficient way to work with a Linux machine. So start playing. And thanks for watching.